So let's look at describing chemical reactions. And being able to give a good description of a chemical reaction is very important in chemistry because chemical reactions are used to manufacture daily things. Things we use every single day are often the result of a chemical reaction. Things such as plastics, metals, medicine, fabric, you name it, chances are it is a chemical reaction that has resulted in that product. Something that we use every single day. Now, when we are describing a chemical reaction, it's important to know that in a chemical reaction, and what a chemical reaction really is, is a chemical change. We are taking two or more elements, combining together and getting a chemical change. Now, the chemical change results in new substances. We get something new. And these new substances that are formed are a result of collisions. So elements combine together. These collisions break bonds that exist and form new bonds. So it's the colliding atoms or the colliding molecules that actually break apart and form new bonds. And we're going to spend a lot of time looking at this collision and this forming new bonds. But before we get into that, we want to be able to describe the reactions. And one of the ways that we can describe a reaction is through a chemical equation. The one thing that is nice about chemical equations is we actually are going to be using some of our chemical formulas. So some of those formulas that we've already developed, we're going to use those chemical formulas and we're going to use those chemical formulas to describe chemicals that are going to react. And we call these chemicals that react the reactants. And so if we were describing the chemical equation for water, we could start with hydrogen and oxygen. So two hydrogen molecules react with one oxygen molecule. And once they react, they're going to create something. They are going to produce something. What they produce are called the products. So we start with our reactants and we end up with our products. And we probably already know that when we react hydrogen and oxygen, our product is going to be water, H2O. Now notice in this equation, we have two hydrogen and one oxygen. And if we count the number of atoms, there's one, two, three, four hydrogen with one, two oxygen. And look at our count over here. One, two, three, four hydrogen with one, two oxygen. The same number of atoms on each side of the equation. Now that's going to become important because that's actually a demonstration of what's called the law of conservation of mass. And the law of conservation of mass is a law that applies to many, many fields of science in many situations. How we are going to describe it is we're going to first have to define a closed system. So when we say a closed system, it's like a container with a lid. Nothing else is allowed in or out, and we're only looking in that container. Now, if we do examine this closed system for chemistry and in terms of writing chemical equations, Here's the important piece. The total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products. We don't put in some reactants and get more products. The mass must be the same. This is described as the law of conservation of mass. And we're going to look at this quite a bit in various fields of science, but in chemistry, what that means for us is that we must have something equal. We're going to create a chemical equation. And the chemical equation, much like the law of conservation of mass, means two things must be equal. We're going to try and equate things, make things equal. And in chemistry, here's our big piece. Here's our application of the law of conservation of mass. This tells us that the number of atoms of each element is the same in the reactants and the products. We are going to equate, we are going to make the number of atoms equal in our reactants and products. And when we have them equal, 
we can apply the law of conservation of mass with this statement. We say that atoms are conserved and the mass is conserved. So when we are applying the law of conservation of mass, we are really conserving mass by conserving atoms. The atoms are going to stay the same. Now that's going to become more apparent as we apply the law of conservation of mass, but the key to all of this is that the number of atoms is the same. And we're going to apply that throughout more as we start to create chemical equations.